So as I keep saying over and over again, cloud computing is really all about embracing this concept of failure and architecting and designing it and developing for it from the get-go as we're designing our services. Let's talk about why this is really important. What I show on the slide here are some reasons why a service instance may fail. Right? And failure could just mean it stops for some reason too. Maybe it's even a purposeful stop. It's not just a, you know, an act of God kind of stop or a hardware failure kind of stop. So here are some reasons. First reason is a developer-related reason where there's an unhandled exception. Right? This usually means there's a bug in the code because something happened that was unexpected and a developer didn't write code to handle this thing because it was unexpected. I mean, usually what will happen is the unhandled exception will get logged when the process terminates. The developers will get the unhandled exception information and they will go and fix the application to now know that this unexpected thing is now an expected thing. So they'll fix the mod application to handle this and then they will go and redeploy a new version of the application. But we should assume when we're writing code that there will be exceptions that we didn't anticipate for from the get-go. And that's okay. Let's deploy the application, let's find out about those failures as it runs, let's fix them and make this an iterative process where we're constantly versioning and updating our services in production to make them better and better and better over time. Another reason why services may fail or stop is because of a DevOps or administrative reason. For example, you might be running 100 instances of a service because maybe it's Christmas time. During that time, a lot of people are making purchases from your e-commerce website. But now when the holiday season is over, you don't have that many people making purchases, and so you want to scale the number of instances down because you also want to save money. You're in a public cloud environment, you're typically paying hourly for each of those instances that's running in the data center. So when you choose to scale some of those instances down, the orchestrator will take some of those instances and just kill them. Now those instances may have been processing client requests when they're being killed. And then those client requests won't get a response back, and then they would have to retry in order to recover. Now there are some things you can do here to handle this in a more graceful fashion, and I will talk about this later in the course. Another DevOps reason why a service may fail is you're upgrading the service to a new version of the code. Just like I talked about in the unhandled exception scenario, where you've now modified the code to make it more robust, and now you want to go and deploy a new version out. Well, you might have a version one of your code running on 10 virtual machines in a data center, and when you want to go and upgrade those from version one to version two, then you need to bring down a version 1 instance in order to bring up a version 2 instance. And it could be that that version 1 instance was handling a client request at the time you've decided to bring it down. So then the client, again, will have to retry to be resilient to this kind of versioning on the fly. And I will talk about later in the course uh, several different ways about how you can do versioning within your service and the pros and cons of those different techniques. Then there's the orchestrator. The orchestrator is this thing in the data center that manages uh, placing your code onto the virtual machines and making sure that if there's a hardware failure or if your application crashes due to a software failure, the orchestrator is the thing that makes sure that you keep up and running. And again, I'll be talking about this more uh, shortly. Well, the orchestrator, especially if you're using a public cloud, it controls the hardware in the data center, and it can decide to move your code from one virtual machine to a completely different virtual machine in the data center if it chooses to, right? And this is considered in an implementation detail to you of the data center. So you should just be aware that whatever orchestrators you're using, it may have rules. It may move things around to load balance things. Maybe you have a couple of services running on one machine and they're being hammered with a lot of traffic. The orchestrator might detect that and might decide to move one service to another machine in order to balance the load to improve the performance of the two services. And that can help get rid of that noisy neighbor problem I talked about a little bit earlier. And then there's force majeure, right, or otherwise known as act of God's things. These are things that are kind of out of your control. Obviously, a, a piece of hardware or virtual machine could fail due to hardware failure. The power supply could die. The fan could overheat and stop working. The hard disk could fail 
for whatever reason. The network controller might go down. A router might lose power, or maybe somebody steps on a wire, and so the communication drops out, right? A bad networking cable, et cetera, right? There's lots of reasons where just hardware fails for some reason. So when we're designing for distributed cloud applications, we just are always in the back of our mind, we're saying we know this is possible, and we wanna make sure <clears throat> that everything keeps running even if this occurs. Another example is data center outages in general, natural disasters, um, you know, a meteorite hits, a light, lightning bolt hits somewhere. Um, it could be a, a terrorist attack of some sort, right? There are certain things that are just out of our control. Since failure is inevitable and it is unavoidable, we embrace it. Right? And this means that we are architecting, assuming failures will happen. And we think cattle, not pets. Some of you may be familiar with this term of cattle versus pets. Pets are, you know, your dogs and cats where you name them and you love them. And when they get sick, you go and you take them to the doctor and you, uh, you know, get them better and you treat them special, right? Cattle, on the other hand, we don't typically name and just one cattle is another piece of cattle. And when you are designing for cloud applications, you want to think more in the cattle kind of view, right? Where I have a bunch of pieces of hardware and I have this service and I want to run it on this piece of hardware, but it doesn't matter if it runs on this hardware or this piece of hardware or this piece of hardware. It just runs on some piece of hardware. And if that hardware goes down, we want that code to run on a different piece of hardware. So you need to start breaking the habit of thinking of, this is my special piece of hardware, and I treat it special in some way. Because if something bad happens to it, then you'll feel bad. You have to start designing thinking, uh, they're all the same, doesn't matter. They're all the same and I can run it here, I can run it there, and it's all fine. And then use an orchestrator that avoids single points of failure. So if you have things like a router, you know, the router might be routing to 10 different machines, but if the router goes bad, then now those 10 machines don't get that traffic anymore. So you really wanna use multiple routers going to different racks of machines. And you wanna keep the spanning out so that there's no single point of failure in your design. And this is important in software design as much as it is in hardware design. I have seen people design things where they say, well, all network requests, we're gonna send it through this service for logging purposes. Well, and then, and that service can forward the request on to someplace else. Well, if that service that does the logging goes down and all requests go through it, you now have a single point of failure and none of the requests get through anymore. So you have to design your architecture to avoid these single points of failure to make sure that everything stays robust and resilient. So you can always handle client requests that are coming in. And the typical way that we do this is we do backups, right, replicas. So we run multiple instances of a service. We don't put our code on one machine, because if that machine goes down, then the code's not there accepting requests anymore. Instead, we create multiple machines, we put the code on those multiple machines. So if one machine goes down, we still have a bunch of other that can handle the requests. That's what we do for code. Now for data, it's a slightly different story. For data, we're gonna put that typically on one machine, but we're also going to replicate that data onto other machines. So if the one machine that has our data crashes, then we can go to other replicas, and then we can make new replicas to get back up to the replica count that we desire. And again, all these topics I will be discussing in much more detail as we go through the course.